G'day, Paul Brennan, Bring Our Birds Home campaign. Time for another video update. It's Wednesday the 12th of April. It's been a week or so since the last update, and we've been doing this campaign now, Bring Our Birds Home, for nearly two months. A few more days, and it'll be two months in that time since I put up the first video announcing the launch of the campaign to a Facebook page that no one knew was there, that had zero followers, to now. I think we've done pretty well. We have tens of thousands of video views under our belt, tens of thousands of image views, um, hundreds of uh, comments, uh, thousands of likes across multiple posts, and I think our uh, likes total for the page itself is up around 720, with a target of 5,000. So I think we've come quite a long way since that first day back in February, the 16th of February. So where are we at now? Well, uh, the promo video has had over 10,000 views as of yesterday, Tuesday, and that's phenomenal. Thank you for sharing the links and for pushing out the um, posting containing that video. It's been such an effective communication tool for us in this campaign. And if you look at the Facebook data, uh, I see that over half of the video views are 10 seconds or longer duration, which means people are watching most, if not the full duration of the video. So the maximum message is getting out to most people, and that's fantastic. Uh, also, we've been working hard on image collateral, the latest one being the one I've got up on the screen here, a virtual depiction of how our birds could look in a display situation using the Seattle Museum of Flight as a backdrop, stripping out their artifacts and putting in our birds. I think it's important to have those images so people can visualize the end game here. So we've got quite a big... Uh, goal in mind here to reclaim and repatriate the five airframes of national significance, the Electra, the DC-8, the 737, the DC-10 and the 747 scattered at locations all around the world. Our funding campaign, crowdfunding campaign in May is all about raising funds for recce trips around those five locations for a team of people to go and meet the people involved at the locations, create the relationships needed to then get hold of the aircraft at some point. I can update you on the DC-8 NZC. Uh, from the Brazilian Embassy at the end of last week, we heard um, conclusive information on the status of that airframe. It is intact at Manaus Airport. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It hasn't been dismantled, broken up or sold. We know who owns it. We know sort of probably what it owes the owner, uh, which is the airport company at this stage and we know what is required to get it off the register there and we know where to go to get the paperwork done to export it out of Brazil. There's only one place it can be exported to really and you know where that is, that is back here. I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch, I'm keeping it real, anything could happen. But thanks to our friends at the Brazilian Embassy in Wellington, Pedro and Elisa now specifically, a pathway does seem to be opening up to that airframe. I'm feeling quite positive about it and uh, all I'd say is watch this space. Hopefully there'll be more information and it'll be good information on that shortly. But the main thing is it's still there and we haven't lost it yet. And the way the, the planets are aligning behind this one, it's looking good. A colleague of ours is now um, haggling the 737 NAD in North Carolina with the uh, airport authority that uh, accommodates the boneyard where that airframe is. I should have some information on that very shortly. Also trying to find out the best way to approach the Cubans about the DC-10. Um, and I'm pretty close to contacting the Russian embassy to talk about the 747 NZV in Moscow. And really approaching it in the same way as I approached the Brazilian embassy about the DC-8. So watch that space as well. The Electra will keep for a while. It's still operational. No danger of losing it. And uh, the... Um, visit to Buffalo Airways in Canada will be part of uh, those five recce trips. Uh, so we're raising between 20 and 35k, that is the goal in the uh, first part of the crowdfunding campaign, to finance those uh, recce trips. They'll include an airframe expert, a very good negotiator, and probably me, though I think I'm reasonably good at negotiating, uh, as a representative of Bring Our Birds Home, going around those locations and basically securing the airframes the best way we can. Now, to get that money and to have the best hope of it, we have to have as much publicity and uh, knowledge of our campaign out there as, as possible in the mainstream media as well as social media. So we have our PDF 
with all the information and the great images, including these new display images in them, out to media, out to newspapers, out to radio, out to TV very shortly, and to a couple of uh, magazine publications, a few of them aviation magazines. So we're doing the best we can to get the story out as widely as possible. So we have a sort of a coiled spring effect when we activate that um, give a little page that people go pow and want to donate. People are already asking how they can donate now. So that's uh, promising. And also people are offering great help, by the way, material help in the areas of travel, uh, engineering, uh, how to set up trusts and um, incorporated societies and how to operate the financing of that. So we're getting some great help coming forward. And another thing that's a really cool thing is that uh, people are coming up with images and memorabilia. And here's an example. I got these images through two days ago from Steve Thomas, whose grandfather, Dave Thomas, was one of the original NAC 737 captains. And Dave was at Wellington for the arrival of the first 73 delivered, ZK NAC. Our one, of course, is NAD. The second one delivered, the one that still survives. But Dave was at Wellington on a typical southerly day at Wellington for the arrival of ZK NAC. And he shot some of the images that you're seeing now up on the screen, which his grandson, Steve Thomas, has sent to me. Sadly, Steve tells me that Dave passed away in September. I met Dave Thomas back in the 90s when I made a program on the history of the 737 in New Zealand. I interviewed him for that program. So it's sad to hear that he's passed away. And it's people like Dave Thomas that we remember when we do this campaign, Bring Our Birds Home. It's more than just the planes. It's, it's the meaning that goes behind those airframes, that those airframes represent. And one of those things they represent are fine New Zealanders who were many of them at the top of their game during that era and helping to build the nation that we have today. So thank you, Steve, for sending those images. If anyone has memorabilia or images um, that they want to share, feel free to message us, send them in, and we can include them in the video updates or post them on the Facebook page. That's it for now. Um, if anything new happens in the next few days or so, there'll be another video update. Uh, we're just uh, going to do the best we can now on getting the message out there, getting the mainstream media engaged and getting ready to do the best we can uh, with our crowdfunded campaign coming up in May. As we work hard after two months now to bring our birds home.